As you might know, the MacBook Pro 15 from 2015 uh, is not a new computer. But I found myself in need of a new travel and work computer. Uh, so things like screen, battery life, that will be the main point of the video. Uh, connectivity and also keyboard quality was of utmost importance. And in all those areas, and with a bit of tweaking also the battery life, on this 15-inch laptop from 2015 can be quite excellent. Uh, in this video we will be going through how to optimize your MacBook for ultimate battery life and also a little bit of performance because the two are interlinked. Uh, so let us begin. Now first off there has been a few hardware modifications that has happened to this laptop. The first is a repaste. I have used liquid metal but for the purposes of this video a good old repaste with normal thermal paste will also work very well. I have changed the battery and I have changed the SSD. The SSD has been changed uh, via an adapter and I'm using the Samsung EVO 960. All of these changes have been covered extensively by the wider MacBook community, so I will not be going over how these changes uh, are applied. Uh, I will, however, say that one thing that hasn't been mentioned a lot of places is putting tape between the fans and the heatsink. By default, a lot of the air that goes over the fins of the heatsink instead go over the heat pipe. This is not very efficient in terms of cooling, so I recommend using a heat-resistant tape to cover this area so that we force the largest amount of air through the fins. This will have an impact on cooling performance, especially when fans are spinning rapidly. As for battery change and SSD swap and repaste, I assume you will be able to find a much better guide out there than I will be able to provide in this video. So let's move on. Now let's start off with something that is very common and yet a little bit unknown in the wider MacBook community, and that is power draw of third-party SSDs. Now the issue that was in previous macOS versions that the uh, SSD wouldn't be recognized at all without some kext modifications, so you couldn't like install macOS onto the SSD, for example, that has been fixed. Almost any NVMe SSD you plug into an adapter on these MacBooks will work out of the box. They will, however, use much more power than the um, native SSD. Now, the problem is not that the SSD is less efficient. Uh, if anything, the new SSDs under load are much more efficient than the old SSDs that Apple was using. And this is due to uh, advances in SSD technology, more power-efficient chips, more power-efficient controllers. The problem, however, is that the operating system, macOS, is not telling the SSD to go into hibernation as often as it should, or as quickly as it should. So it stays in a higher power mode more often. To fix this, there is a handy kex that is available on GitHub called SSD PM Enabler, or SSD Power Management Enabler. The way to get this working is pretty simple. Uh, you will have to reboot into recovery, so that is restarting the machine and then holding Command R on uh, the restart, navigating to terminal uh, and type in csrutil space disable, and then restarting the machine. That will allow you to install custom text, which this is. Now the way you do this is that you download the SSD PM enabler text from the release page. Uh, you specifically want to download the zip file. Automatically macOS will unzip this when it is in the downloads folder. Then for installation you want to open the terminal. So you just type in terminal in Spotlight. And then you copy paste this into terminal and press enter. Now I have already done this so I will not need to do it. Uh, but uh, you just read through the remainder of the steps here. So macOS will open a pop-up. If the pop-up doesn't arrive, you go into uh, settings, then you go into uh, security, security settings here, and then it will uh, say that there was a, an attempt to open a third-party app or something. You want to accept that. 
then you reboot and the SSD should now be able to go into hibernation more often. Now a way to check this is to download Temp Monitor from Vimy Studios. They have a free trial uh, and you only need to check this once. You go into the current section and then you go down to where it says SSD. Now this, uh, in this case, the SSD's rest mode is 2.5 amps and you, as you can see right now, it is resting at 2.5 amps. So this is working as intended. So excellent. We can now move on to undervolting. Undervolting in macOS is a little bit more difficult than undervolting in Windows. Uh, there are also very large limitations on the number of models that you can actually undervolt when it comes to MacBooks. Uh, only MacBooks produced between 2013 and 2015 can be undervolted. This includes the uh, Ivy Bridge, not Sandy Bridge, the later one of the Bridge versions, Haswell and Broadwell Intel processors. To undervolt on the MacBook, we still have to disable uh, the secure platform, so that is rebooting with Control R pressed in and then navigating to terminal, CSR util disable, uh, and then we will be able to inject some kexts. Now, the kext we will inject is called voltage shift, and I will show you how to use it now. Now, to download voltage shift, you simply type in voltage shift for Mac, and then you should uh, land on a GitHub page. Here, you want to download binaries from this section here, so just press here and then you can uh, download the binary here. Now I like to move this entire folder onto my desktop and as you can see I already have it right here. As you can see. Now to use this we will first have to go into terminal and we will have to navigate into the voltage shift folder by typing in CD and then the file placement. Uh, I simply drag and drop the file and, and then it will automatically paste the path into terminal. Now we need to give root access to the text. You do this by pasting in this command here, sudo chown r root wheel voltage shift dot text and you press enter. I have already done this so I don't need to. Uh, you will likely have to paste in your password uh, or type in your password and then press enter and then you should be able to do something like dot shift voltage shift mon and that is the monitoring tool. Now the way to actually use this software is that you open up a uh, benchmarking software like Cinebench and you type in dot slash voltage shift space mon and you will see all the current values that your CPU is operating at including the voltage, wattage, clock frequency, temperature and etc. Now what you want to do first is that we want to run Cinebench without messing with any of the offsets first. This is to see where the CPU lands on in terms of power use. By default, the power limit of the uh, CPU in macOS is 100 watts, especially for this CPU, uh, which basically means it will run wild uh, whichever the undervolt you set it at. So first we want to figure out what the sustained wattage our cooling can handle. This will be different for you. Now, as you could see, we could handle about 50 uh, watts. So now we get to play a little bit with the undervolt. So the way this works is that the three first numbers is the CPU, GPU, and CPU cache. These are the ones that will have the most uh, effect on your power use. So you type in dot slash voltage shift offset, and then space minus 90 in my case, minus 90, minus 90. It's what I found works for my CPU. This will be different for you. I recommend you start by trying minus 15 or minus 10 and then incrementally increase until Cinebench or your system crashes. And then you pull back after the restart about 20 millivolts. And then you run that for an extended period of time until you figure out what works for you. Now, as you can see, even with the undervolt, we are pulling just as much power, but our clock frequencies are much, much higher. So this actually worked. 
Now, once you have found the uh, correct undervolt for your system, you want to build a text that will launch with your system. For this, you will type in the command that's on the screen now. And uh, the numbers here mean a bunch of different things. So the first three numbers are the same. It's the undervolt on the CPU, GPU, that's the iGPU, and cache. The next three numbers are for the IO. You don't want to touch these. Next one is turbo on or off. I recommend leaving it on. The two next numbers are power limit one and two. So that's turbo boost short and long. And the next number is either a one or a zero. One means that you want the kex to enable on launch. And the next is the amount of seconds you want it to take for it to re-enable. Because by default, it will disable itself each time you put the machine in hibernation. That is, you close the lid. Now, when that is set, you want to restart the machine. You might wonder why I have both a power limit and an undervolt. Uh, the reason is actually quite simple. I would like a quiet computer that is as cool to the touch as possible while giving me the most amount of performance possible uh, and also battery life. I never did explain how performance and battery life are interlinked, did I? Well, it's quite an easy uh, calculation. You have a certain amount of performance that is needed to perform a certain task, say edit a video, open a YouTube uh, video, uh, scroll through news on Safari, like whatever. There is a certain amount of performance that is needed to perform the task. Now, if you can make that same amount of performance take up less power, you will have a more power efficient machine because it will use less power to bring you the same result. That is why undervolting improves battery life. Now, there are auxiliary benefits. Uh, if you have a more quiet computer, the fans will not spin up. Spinning the fans require power, etc. etc. If you repaste and have a really cool processor, especially in low, lower power states, uh, the computer won't have to supply as much voltage to the chip because a chip at higher temperatures requires higher voltage to remain stable. Uh, that uh, creates a runaway uh, temperature uh, problem, especially on computers that has very uh, poor cooling solutions, poor thermal paste, or uh, where the fins of the heatsink are clogged with dust. Now, as you could see, my computer could sustain maximally 50 watts of power. Uh, that is regardless of the undervolt. The undervolt doesn't magically increase the amount of power it can dissipate. It only makes that power frame more efficient. So the reason I set the P1 limit, the turbo long limit, to 40 watts is so that it can sustain that performance forever while remaining relatively quiet and relatively cool. Uh, for example, this entire video took this long to export and the computer rem remained relatively quiet, of course the fan spun up some, uh, during the uh, rendering. So if this is something you can be interested in, you can most certainly try. Remember, undervolting does not destroy your computer. It cannot destroy it. It will only make it very unstable if it's pushed too far. The only thing to be very careful of is to type in minus before the number on the offset. Uh, the reason for that is if you don't type in minus, it will be a plus. So it will be an overvolt. And overvolting can most certainly destroy your computer. So be careful, type in the minus. The, the worst thing that can happen is that it will crash. Also, don't build the actual text to the system without confirming that it works in the offset. Uh, if you do that, it will be fine. Now, after doing all of that, this computer lasts about seven hours playing YouTube playback and about 13 hours uh, editing Word documents, uh, scrolling through news, Reddit, uh, forums, uh, just using Safari generally. Uh, so this is quite good. It's almost as efficient as Apple Silicon, of course not quite, but for an old Intel MacBook, this is most certainly some of the best you will get. All right, that's it for me. Have a nice day. I'll see you in the next one.